First things first, open our NEF file. A raw file from a D7200. So file, open, there it is. And double click. And now just wait about ooh, six or seven seconds for the file to open. Bingo, our raw file is open in the develop persona. Though we are actually going to exit develop. We're not going to be using any of these uh, develop controls. Just wait a few seconds for it to develop the file. And there we are, our file in all its wonky glory. First things first, save our project. File and save as. I'll save it into the resources folder and I think I'll call it uh, Lady Godiva. And hit save. Now just wait. It's always a good idea to save your file at the start as after that all you have to do is hold control and press S and instant save at any point during your development. Right, our first adjustment will be to rotate and crop. Select the crop tool. Place the cursor outside of the image and rotate until we have it straight. Let's make the horse look right down his nose at us so make the head very vertical. I think about there looks fine. Now change the ratio from unconstrained to original ratio. There we go. I'd like to keep the image ratio the same. And bring in the corners. So corner one, make sure we've got some room above the horse's head. And I think that space just between the horse and the rider should be the center. So fiddle and bring in the bottom corner. This is just a case of moving things around and stretching and squeezing until I think I have it correct. Okay, no, now the horse's ears seem to be a bit clipped. Okay, bring the image up a little, stretch the bottom. We're nearly there now. Yeah, that's, that's very close, I think. I think about, ooh, about there will do. No, come on. I think about there, apply. Finally, a vertical and cropped horse and rider. Next, we'll duplicate the image with Control J. This means we have the original for comparison. We're going to tone map it, hit the tone mapping button to enter the tone mapping persona and allow a few seconds for it to process. The tone mapping persona will allow us to extract masses of detail out of the image. So the tone compression will bring all of the colors into the from the highlights and the shadows into the visible space and then we can use local contrast to really really bring them details out. This really does take quite a while to apply. I suppose I should have shortened it. Oh well, good things come to those who wait. <laughs> That's the tone compression ready. All we're going to do is apply maximum local contrast. Here we go, right to the top. And there we go, right away. Lots and lots of lovely detail. Some people may say it's a little over the top, but I don't think so. Not for this image. Hit apply and let it process. It takes a little while, but not too long. And done. The first adjustment I'm going to apply will be exposure. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little to give myself a little latitude later on for raising colors and highlights. I think about minus one, minus two for now will do. Um, I'll start with uh, minus 1.1. I'll probably adjust it later. There's no um, magic number for this. It's just an educated guess to give myself a, a base, somewhere to start to build everything else upon. Yeah, that looks about right. Just get rid of that. Fine. Next, we're going to increase the brightness, which may seem strange after just decreasing the exposure. But the brightness adjustment will more affect the midtones, which is what I'm after in this instance. 
we won't need much just a little I reckon around there yep yeah, about 12% fine good that's okay the first layers of our adjustment cake so to speak are looking okay now I want to increase the mid-range colors even more so I think I'll use another brightness and contrast but use blend ranges to target the mid-range colors so here we go up with the brightness yep about that much but as you can see the highlights and the shadows are, are, are too bright so now go into the blend ranges and bring down the shadows bring down the highlights so now we have no effect and bring up the lower to mid range colors and bring this point in here so that the shadows are not affected I think about there about there would be fine and bring this point down here so the highlights are not affected just about there will be fine excellent now the brightness of our mid-range colors seems about right slowly getting there now I want to bring out the shadows and highlights but first I'll switch over to the histogram so that I can see what I'm doing select the shadows and highlights adjustment now bring the shadows up no no sorry down to about ooh, there yep i think that'll be fine and bring the highlights up to about there i'm watching my histogram just to make sure i don't clip or don't clip too much there we go about 66 or so good Next I'm going to add some HSL, but first I'm going to save my progress, so Control and S, done. Off it goes, saved. Okay, adjustments and HSL. We'll start with the master. Here we go, and bring the master saturation right down down to about mm, minus 56 next I'll select the reds and increase the saturation to about oh, about there that'll be about fine 32 33 should be adequate now the yellows I'll try to bring up the brownie colors, sort of reddy brownie or yellowy brownie colors by increasing the yellows to around oh, about there. That's nice, getting some nice colors in the stomach there. Okay, I think they're a bit light, so I'll just bring them down a tad, maybe not minus 10, minus there, that'll do. Now go to the cyans. I don't want to touch the greens. I uh, right now I definitely want to increase the saturation in the cyans because the horse stone is bluey cyan in colour, and just the hue make it more greeny cyan just about there that seems fine we'll do the same with the blues we got some blues in there so we want to increase the blues a little bit not too much the blues are predominantly in the shadows and I don't like my shadows to be too saturated and they're a bit light so bring them down just about that much and a slight hue shift move those blues just a bit towards purple that's starting to look quite nice yeah I'm quite pleased with that right HSL 
done. Right, now we're going to add a shadows and highlights filter, which isn't the same as the shadows and highlight adjustment. I can use the shadows and highlights filter to more isolate whites or very light colours. So I'm not using the shadows, so I can leave all that the same. Don't need to touch them. But I just want to play around with the highlights, so bring up the highlight strength just a little bit to about ooh, ooh, about there that's fine and now you can see it's highlighting or isolating the muscle definition giving them more definition a quick check yep we just leave them thin the same and look it's just done a bit of highlighting okay uh, i think it's time to add a bit of color so i think a little magenta into the shadows and maybe some slight skin tone into the mid highlights yeah just to make the image a little more interesting so we'll choose the color balance go straight to the shadows and first add a little bit of red let's bring that up to about Oh, there, that seems fine, and a little bit of blue in the shadows to give a slight purpley tint to the shadows, just makes it a little more interesting. And in the highlights I'm going to add some red, I think about oh, 35, though it is looking a little pink. So, bring in the yellow to about there. Yeah, that looks nice. Looks quite good. I like that. Quite natural. I just want to bring the opacity down on the colour balance. It's all about subtlety when adding layers and layers of adjustments. Yep, looking good. I just want to add a little bit more detail or clarity into the fine details. So let's use the clarity filter and just set it to a small amount, just about there. We don't need much. It's a subtle effect. There we go. Fine. Right. Now it's time to do a little organisation, so we're going to merge everything together, or create a stamp layer, to get ready for our next stage, which is going to be a little bit of dodging and burning. Right click the top layer and select merge visible, and off it goes, merging the layers and placing the merged image into the top layer. This will also have the effect of speeding up Affinity Photo whilst we're dodging and burning as it won't be having to calculate the underlying layers because they'll be hidden. It's quite a good trick actually to m create a merged layer and hide the underlying layers while you're working. It really does increase performance. I know this is going to take a while so I'm going to um, shorten this part of the sequence with the magic of video editing. Phew! <laughs> well, that took a while. But now we have our merged pixel layer. So, now let's select all of our adjustments and group them into a single group to make them easier to work with later. And just tidies them up a little bit before we do our dodging and burning. 